Testing, testing.
can be seated and remain quiet, please. Sets after the third witness, so we can get our evidence out. Sure. If I forget, just remind me. Okay. Thank you. Does it still sound like that? Not to me. You want to say something else? Testing. Testing. It does a little bit. I don't. I can't tell if it's like. Do I sound like that? Testing. Testing. Do I sound like? I sound normal, but I'm wondering if there's some microphone on over here. Well, the only one that's added is the one I've been holding. I'm sorry? The one on the podium. Yeah. So the only one that's on is the one on the podium. Okay. Let's bring the jury, please. Thank you. They, they still have to line up, so you all might want to wait and come stand. webinar is down, but they're working on getting it back up. Okay. You hear about it from anyone. You can't. You can still get it on court TV and right. <laughs>
gentlemen. We hope everyone else may be seated. Members of the jury, welcome back. I hope everyone had a nice weekend. We're going to go ahead and get started here. State, when, when you're ready, you may call your next witness. Justin Colton. Justin Anthony Colton, C O L T O N. Yes, I'm a full-time college student. Okay, and where do you go to school? Uh, Florida Gulf Coast University. Okay. Where did you go to high school? Uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. And when did you graduate? Um, 2021. I'd like to call your attention to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that day? Yes. At that time, uh, what year were you in at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas? A freshman. Okay. I'd like to call your attention again to that day, fourth period. Do you remember where you were, Mr. Colton? Yes. Where were you? Um, I was in room 1216 okay. in English Who's, class. Pardon? I'm sorry. In English class. Okay. And you remember who your teacher was? Uh, Miss Haas. Okay. I want to show you. Just put it. Let's take the it mark three. And can you, can you see that? Yes. Okay. And there'll come, uh, there'll something come up and you can just circle where you were. Yes. Okay. So fourth period. Uh, tell us what happened. Um, I was in fourth period, um, just sitting there writing an essay, and then uh, heard loud sounds like the gunshots, and then everyone began to run in the classroom. Um, I had ran towards the back, towards the teacher's desk, and I was on the ground. Uh, I had my hand, and I was crawled against the, the ground. Okay. And then what happened? And then um, we sat there for about 20 minutes, or less than 20 minutes probably, and then um, the police had came into our classroom and escorted us out. Okay. So uh, before the police came, you said there were gun you heard gunshots, right? Yes. Where did the gunshots, when you first heard them, where did they sound like they were coming from? Um, by like the exit, close exit of the, the hallway. On the east side? Yes. Okay. And then you heard the shots, and then what happened in your classroom? Um, everyone had got up and ran um, all scattered like around the classroom and was trying to take cover. Okay, and you said you ran to the teacher's desk? Yes. Who was near you? I was uh, next to Maddie and the teacher, and um, Elena was behind me. Okay, uh, Elena Petty? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you see where uh, Alex Schachter, Schachter was? Yes. Did you see anything happen with him? No, I just saw him sit, sitting back in his desk. Okay. And how about Alyssa El Alphabet? No, I didn't see her. Uh, who else was close to you? How about... Um, um, Alex Storrett was close to me when we were sitting in the classroom, and then everyone was kind of like against the wall, so they weren't really behind the desk. Okay. And did you get shot? Yes. All right. When did you get shot, and where did you get shot? Um, 
when I was sitting or sitting or running towards the back of the room in uh, my right arm and my lower right back. Okay. Um, so what, what happened as a result of your injuries? Um, I have a couple fragments still in my lower back and then um, I have a scar on my arm as well. Okay. And did you go right to the hospital? Yes. And how long were you in the hospital? Um, one night and two days. Okay. Um, did you see, um, you said um, you saw Alexander Durrett, he was near you? Yeah, he was sitting near me. Okay, how about William Olson? No, he wasn't by me. He was behind you? He was not by me. Okay. All right, and you said then the police came and took you out? Yes. Okay. And uh, what, do you have any after effects from your injuries? Um, just can't do some motions for because my back. Your Honor, can basis is less weak? Okay, so noted. Thank you. Um, I can't do some motions like with my like motions like working out or anything because my back. Okay. okay. Your Honor, I have no further questions for Mr. Colton. Thank you. Any questions? No, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're excused. Thank you. Miguel Suarez, please. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, sir. You can put your hand down and be seated. And when you're seated, please state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Yes. So, Miguel A. Suarez, last name S-U-A-R-E-Z. Good morning, Mr. Suarez. I do, sir. Uh, what, how are you employed? I'm employed with the Broward Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been with the Broward Sheriff's Office? Uh, approximately 14 years. Okay, what, uh, what is your training? Right now, I'm currently assigned to the crime scene unit of the Broward Sheriff's Office. And what type of training have you had to be in the crime scene unit? I've had uh, over a thousand hours of uh, on-the-job training. Okay. And prior to go becoming in the crime scene unit, what did you do? I was assigned to road patrol. I'd like to call your attention to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that date? Yes, sir. Okay. And how long had you been in the crime scene unit at, at that time? Approximately about two years. Okay. And as a result, uh, did you get a call of being in the crime scene unit? Yes, I was already at our uh, crime scene office, and I was uh, notified by my supervisor of uh, a mass casualty shooting at a, uh, at a school. Okay. And did you respond? Yes, I did. And where did you respond to? I respond to uh, the area of 5901 Northwest Pine Island Road. Okay. And what type of uh, facility is there? That's uh, a school campus. And what's the name of the campus? Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. Okay. So when you got there, were you assigned a particular uh, duty? Yes, as soon as we were able, um, as soon as we were given the all clear, of the school, our supervisors starting assigned, uh, assigning individual assignments for each of one of us. Okay, and what was your assignment? I was tasked with uh, first uh, just documenting one of the students, and from there, I also documenting the second floor building number 12. Okay, and that's the 1200 building? Yes, sir. Okay, and when you were assigned to, to the second floor? Yes, sir. Let me show you uh, State's Exhibit 
think this has already been marked. I need a sticker. Uh, yes, sir. That's the be a diagram of uh, building 12, second floor. Second floor. Okay. And that's the floor you were assigned to. Yes. Right? Okay. Now showing you states exhibits 10M, 10N, and 10 0. Mr. Swartz, would you take a look at that? That? Yes. What are those photographs? Okay. Uh, these photographs are the uh, some of the uh, cameras um, located on the ceiling, which uh, correspondingly were placed on the west, the middle of the hallway, and also on the east end of the okay. building. And these photographs truly and accurately depict where the cameras were on Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer uh, 10M, 10N, and 10 10. Oh. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. Okay, without objection, States Exhibit 10M, as in Mary, for identification will be received as 229. Uh, States 10N, as in Nancy, for identification will be received as 230. And 10O will be received as 231. should be on the east end of the hallway, sir. You sure that's the east end, Mr. Suarez? Yes. Well, that'll be a west end, sir. That's fine. Okay. So, um, do you see the, tele the colors? You want to show us where the camera is on the west end of the hallway? It's right near, near the window, the double pane window. You know how to work the telescreen? Sir, sir. States Exhibit Mark 230. You recognize that? What's yep. that? That's the uh, camera in uh, Orienton in the middle of the hallway. All right, you want to circle that? Yes. This is the second floor, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I'm going to show you States Exhibit Mark 229. Is that the east side? Yes, sir. Okay. And there's the camera. Okay, good. All right. So what's the first thing you did when you were on the second floor? Um, as, we, uh, as I got up into the second floor, I began my photography, which basically I picked a side, whether it be the east or west end side, and began taking my overalls and intermediates of the whole floor. And uh, did you recover anything or observe anything? 
Yes. What did you observe? Um, on, um, as I'm walking toward, um, on the high, on the hallway, I observed several broken out windows and also what appear to be uh, spent shell casings along some parts of the hallway. Okay. Let me show you now. States exhibits mark 10R, 10W, 10B, and 10Q. And yes, you can get a right there. Yes, sir. Okay. What, what is that? These are some spent shell casings that were the, the first two shown are two just west of room 1234. Okay. And also one within the threshold of the open door going into room 1234. All right. All 1234? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer states exhibits 10Q, 10R. 10W and 10B. Mm -hmm. Is it B or B? V. Yeah, I'm sorry. If I can take it. Do you want to see it? Nope. I have a notation. Thank you. The only objection is to 401. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Over the defense objection, states Q will be received as 232, states R will be received as 233, states, I'm sorry, 10 Q is 232, 10 R is 233, 10 B as in Victor will be received as 234, and 10 W will received as, be received as 235. States Exhibit Mark 232. And uh, you want to show us where 234 is? That's right. Oh, right there. Okay. I said 1234. I'm sorry. Didn't I? I'm sorry. 1234. 1234 right? Yes. Okay. I think you said 234. Because you said I'm showing you 232, and I'm asking you to identify 234. All right. Okay. All right, let me show you. Let me get this right. Uh, 232, <laughs> and you're, you're pointing out 1234, right? 1244? This is 1234, I circle. Yep. Okay. All right. And you, 1234 is where? Hold on. reference to uh, 232, states of Hewitt 232, um, you said there were some casings? Yes, sir. All right, you want to show us where the casings were? It's just west of the room here on the porch. I'm sorry, just west? Just west of the 1234 uh, door on the floor. Okay, would you just circle? Yes. Okay, showing you now 234, states into the 234. And is that a close up of those casings? Can you see them? Yes. Okay. Now, within, you mentioned that the classroom door 1234 was shattered, the glass, right? Yes. Uh, did you go into 1234? Yes, I did. And what uh, damage did you see within 1234? Um, um, when I, as I walked in, there was uh, damage that including uh, several uh, suspected projectile entry sites, strike sites from the floor on um, several desks, and also on the far wall of the room. Okay. 
Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 235. What does that show? Also, just west of the door will be those two fire casings there, and also the one within the threshold of the door. Okay, and we're looking into classroom 1234 through the door? Yes, sir. And that's where you saw the uh, suspected uh, strike marks from a firearm, correct? Yes. Okay, I'm showing you now states exhibit 233. Is that a close-up? Yes, of the uh, casing on the uh, threshold of the door. Okay, and that's 1234, correct? Yes. Okay. Now I want to show you State's Exhibit Mark 10X, 10U, and 10Y. And ask you if you can identify this officer stores. This is my uh, documentation photos of uh, room 1231, okay. which also had a spank casing on the floor. Okay. And do these photographs of uh, classroom 1231 truly and accurately depict the scene as you saw it on Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer now State's Exhibits 10Y, 10U, and 10X. Your Honor, we have no objection to 10Y or 10U, but if I may just briefly on 10X. I do have one. You need to make an objection, sir, Bar? Yes, ma'am, okay. please. Thank you. The defense objection states 10U will be received as 236, 10X will be received as 237, and 10Y will be received as 
What does that show? That's a uh, overall photograph of the outside of uh, room 1231. Okay. And 238, states exhibit 238. That'll be intermediate photo of room 1231. Okay, and did you go into 1230, 1231? Yes, sir. And what damage, if any, did you see? It's uh, uh, several uh, projectile penetration stress sites within the floor, desk, and also the far wall of the classroom. And showing you uh, now uh, State Exhibit 236, you mentioned the casing outside of 1231. Do you see that? Yes, sir. You want to? Okay. Now showing you State's Exhibit Mark 10T for identification. Deputy Suarez, if you take a look at that, please, sir. Do you recognize that? Yes, sir. Okay, do you take that photograph? Yes, I did, sir. And is, what does that photograph show? That's another spent casing found on the hallway, on the south, on, on the hallway. And uh, where is it in the, the hallway? It's across uh, room 1231. Okay, and does that photograph truly and accurately depict the casing as you saw it in the hallway? On February the 14th, 2018? Yes, sir. Okay, Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit uh, 10T. No objection. Okay, State's Exhibit 10T, like Tom, for identification, will be received as State 239. All right, showing you now State's Exhibit 239. You want to point out where the casing was that you mentioned? Okay. So those, uh, there were six casings. What did you do with those six casings? After I um, take my overall main immediates and close-up shots of the uh, fire casings, I uh, marked the specific areas they're at in the hallway with the room number and the FC that you see in there, which meant fire casing. Okay. And then after I've done, I've done all my photos, then I would uh, package it as evidence. Okay. Let me show you now State's Exhibit marked 10P. Deputy Suarez, excuse me. Casings are collected okay. from the hallway. And uh, when you collect them, you put them in those individual boxes? Yes, I did. And you indicated on the boxes where they were found in the hallway? Yes, sir. Okay, with reference to classroom 1231, 1234, and 1232? Yep, to each okay. perspective of classroom. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer uh, State's Exhibit 10. 10P, I call. Okay, 10, State's Exhibit 10P for identification will be received as 240. Now, Deputy uh, Suarez, I want to show you State's Exhibits. Eleven D, eleven A, and ten Z. <coughs> yes, here if you can identify this, sir. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, sir. This would be uh, what I'm almost one area photo, area drone footage photo of buildings twelve and thirteen. And the other ones are uh, specifically an aerodrome footage 
portal of building 13. Okay. Where is building 13 with reference to building 12? Or 1200 to 1300? Building 13 will be just east of building 12. Okay. And why did you take those photographs? Those photographs were taken um, uh, to show an overall of building 13 since uh, we had several pieces of projectile fragments on that rooftop. Okay. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer state's exhibits. 11B, 11A, and 10Z. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. States 10Z, like zebra, for identification will be received as 241. 11A, like alpha, will be received as 242. 11B, like bravo, will be received as 243. Okay. And uh, when you, you took those photographs, right? Yes. Okay, and then you went over, did you do anything on the, the rooftop? Of yes, the um, what we did, sir, is we, uh, if you see the orange markings on there, those are markings suggesting the areas that I found the projectile fragments, which are uh, suspected pieces of um, rounds on top of the rooftop, and also marked the total of them, which was around, I believe, seven pieces and also we also put the direction of where the building is so we can have a top view of the direction of the building. Okay. Now let me show you. States exhibit now 241. Okay. So where's the where's the twelve hundred building? Okay, and where's the uh, 1300? Okay, now let's see if we can. And I think that's as close as I can do it. You, you, uh, can you point out where you saw these uh, fragments? Now showing me State's Exhibit Mark 242. What's that show? That shows um, all this area here. As I was walking along the roof, as I was finding several uh, suspected projectiles, I would mark them with different numbers. So when we do take aerial photographs, they can be seen were exactly on top of the rooftop they were at. Okay. And that's directly across from the 1200 building, correct? Yes, sir. Showing you now states to the 243. <coughs> uh, can you point out where the... Uh, Windows are in the 1200 building? Say again, sir. Facing west? Well, there's an arrow there that's facing north. You want me to point? No, the windows in the 1200 building that are facing west. Mm -hmm. Can you point that out for us? You said the windows? All right, that's the second floor, right? Yes. And then. You can't see the third floor from there, but. You can't see what? The third floor barely, but those okay. are circle was the second floor. But you can see kind of at the, the end there, like uh, part right of the here. Floor, right? Yep. Right here. And obviously below the second floor is the first floor, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you can see again the, the uh, where you marked the, the fragments? Yes, sir. On the roof? Okay. Now I'm going to show you space exhibits 11J, 11I. 11H, 11G, 11F, 11E, and 11D. Ask you if you can identify that sort of
Yes. These were the seven um, individual items, sir, that I identified as suspected projectile fragments that I labeled with an orange marker on the rooftop. Okay. And did you label each fragment with a different number? Yes. So one to seven? Yes, sir. And did these photographs that I've just showed you truly and accurately depict the numbers and the location uh, and the fragment? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to now offer uh, these exhibits 11J, 11I, 11H, 11G, 11F, 11E, and 11D. No objection. Okay. <clears throat> Without objection, States Exhibit 11D, like Delta, will be received as 244, 11E, 245. 11F, 246, 11G, 247, 11H, 248, 11I, 249, and 11J, 250. Thank you, Honor. <clears throat> and how did you collect? Did you collect those fragments? Yes, I did, sir. And how did you collect them? I <coughs> did the same thing. I collected them in separate boxes and labeled each one with a specific number and the location from where it was collected from. Okay. Show me State's Exhibit 11C. And see if you can identify that. labeled here rooftop one through seven and each of the fragments it's labeled with its current responding box and you put them in the boxes yes I did okay your honor I now over states exhibit 11c is there any objection no ma'am states exhibit 11c like charlie will be received as 251 <clears throat> showing you now states exhibit 244 <coughs> is that what you found on the roof and you label number one yes sir okay states exhibit 245 label number two Yes. And States Exhibit 246. Label number three. Yes. States Exhibit 247. Label number four. Yes. Correct. Yes. States Exhibit 248. Label number five. Yes. Correct. States Exhibit 249, label 6. Correct? Yes. And the last one, you said you found 7. <coughs> States Exhibit 250, you label that number 7. Yes. Okay. And that was directly across from the 1200. Correct? Yes. Your Honor, I have no further questions. Just uh, yes, briefly. Okay. 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 <coughs> Good morning, Detective. Good morning. Just a few questions. When you arrived on scene at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas School and you were assigned to the 1200 building, you worked with some other crime scene detectives, correct? Yes, I did. Okay. And each crime scene detective took a lead on a floor. Is that correct? Yes. And the first floor was Detective Christian, correct? 
Yes, I believe so. Yes. You were responsible for the second floor. Yes. And Detective Crespo was in charge of the third floor, correct? Yes. Okay. And obviously, as a detective in crime scene, you have extensive experience and training to prepare you for such a task as you had to perform on the 14th of February, correct? Yes. Okay. And you have protocol that, that you have to follow when processing a scene, isn't that correct? Yes. And one of the first things, if not the first thing that you're supposed to do, is to photograph the scene as close in time as to when the incident or the crime occurred, <coughs> correct? Yes. And that's because when you have to process a crime scene, especially this crime scene, it being so large, sometimes things get moved or they have to be displaced in order to document it, correct? Yes. Okay. So it's true then that the photographs that you took of the second floor would be the photographs that most accurately depict the crime scene as close in time to the event, correct? Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No questions, John. Okay, thank you, sir. You're excused. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, Laura Zucchini. Good morning. Please let, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you so much. You can go ahead and have a seat. Ma'am, if you would please speak into the microphone. Tell us your full name and spell your last name for the record, okay? Uh, Laura Sacchini, my last name. It's Z E double C H I N I. Good morning, Mrs. Kini. Yeah. How are you? Good morning. Good. Uh, what, what do you do? Do you work? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> Give me the yes part. Oh, well, I do sometimes Uber. Uber? Yes, okay. but I have investments here. Okay. So I live from my investment. Okay. So uh, how long have you worked with Uber? <laughs> oh, about four years. Okay. And... Uh, only Uber, or do you work for another company? Too? No, no, only Uber. Just Uber? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Zucchini, I'd like to call your attention to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Do you remember that day? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have occasion uh, to pick someone up and bring them to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to uh, offer... Um, a certified copy of uh, Uber Records, the defense has seen this. 11 R. No objection. No objection. Other than 401, your honor. Okay. States Exhibit 11 R, like Richard, will be received as 252. Okay, Mr. King, I'm going to show you. Uh, they can do it 252. Let's see if I can. <coughs> it's hard to read it. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, do you recognize that? Can you see that? Yes. Okay. 
and uh, it shows uh, the name Nicholas Cruz, right? Right. At the top. Thanks for choosing Hoover, Nicholas Cruz. See that? No. At the top. Okay. See it? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, what is this? It's the 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 address. Oh, so will he request me? Okay. And the address that Uber showed me. Okay. To pick to take him to the to that address. I don't know that it was a uh, school. Okay. And it shows the time you picked him up. Is that right? Yes, I think that's just right. I have my phone in and in, in my bag, so. <laughs> but okay. I think it's all right. <clears throat> okay, you mean tell tell me when you say you kept your phone. What what what's the significance significance of your phone? Did you, did you say your glasses? You need your glasses. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> your phone. <laughs> my phone is my in my bag. Right, I know. Why do you why do you mention your phone? Because I, it's you know the colors are different. <laughs> okay, so on your phone you have this. Yes. Okay, that's what I think the judge was. Okay. Was getting at. So tell us how it works. You know. Uh, they request me, and I go to the address to pick uh, the, the the person, the passenger, the rider. Uh, okay, so how do they how do they request you? How do you know where? It comes go? out. It pops out. It pops out where. In the phone, in the app. Okay, in your phone. In my phone. Okay, so how does it how does it pop out? What does it show? Uh, you are online with the Uber, and right. it comes out. Uh, uh, it's uh, it comes out. You know, to pick up the it pick up, it pops out the the address right. where you have to pick up the 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 rider, the passenger. Okay, so when it pops out, it gives you an address. Yes. So, well, how do you know? How, how do you get to the address? The it's like a Google map. It shows where you have to pick it up. Okay. So, you went to seventy two hundred Loxahatchee Road. Yes. Okay. And at two oh six, you got the call, right? You yes. Picked up. They request. Yeah. All right. Do you remember picking someone up at seventy two uh, Loxahatchee Road? Uh, yes, Nicholas Cruz. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, Nicholas, because I uh, it shows only no, it shows the name. Right. I am not sure. I don't remember. Okay. It. So, tell us what happened. You go pick him up. What happened? I pick him up, and he comes in the car, and what kind, what he told me, and he told me uh, he was going to his music class, and that's all. Okay, he said he was going to music class. What, did he have anything with him? Yes, he had a big, well, right now I know it's a backpack, but for me in that time it was a case, okay. a guitar case. Okay, all right, so uh, what kind of vehicle did you have? A RAV4. A, RAV, a RAV4? Yes, Toyota. Okay, it's a four-door vehicle? Yes, Where did, he, where did he get in? Where did he get in the car? In the Los Angeles. Oh, in the back. In the back? Yes. Okay. So, uh, how did, what happened once he got into the back of your vehicle? Yes, he come in and, and then, well, that's when he told me that he was going to the, to the music class. Okay. When he get in. Okay. And uh, this says that uh, the ride lasted 12 minutes and 56 seconds. Yes. Okay. How do you? How did you know where to go? Uh, the, it's the map from Uber. Show me the, the the way to go to the school. Well, to go to the to the address that comes out. Okay. Let me show you State's Exhibit uh, Mark 15C, which appears to be kind of a bigger. Do you recognize? Yes. That? Yes. Is that what's on your phone? Yes, it's the same. It's the same as on your yes. phone. Yes. And yes. even though it, it happened back in February of uh, 2018, you still have it on your phone? Yes. Okay, and this is what shows on your phone? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 15C. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. We haven't seen the judge. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay. 
Other than 401, no objection. Okay, States Exhibit 15C as in Charlie will be received as 253. Okay, Ms. Kitty, I want to show you now State Exhibit 253. So, this is what appears on your phone? Yes. So, 72 uh, Loxahatchee Road, right? Yes. And 5901 Pine Island Road? Yes. And then, what's... The okay, uh, yes, okay. yes. Okay, and is that the route you take? Yes. Okay, and the distance is 4.69 miles? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, when... You're in the car with him. Any any conversation other than what you said? Well, no. He asked me if I, I was, you know, uh, he, I was from the neighborhood, so right. from the area. Right. I know. I told him no that that I pick up some passengers and drop them in the area. That's all. Okay. And uh, did you observe what he was doing, if anything, while he was in the back seat of your uh, RAV4? Well, he was on, on the on the phone. Okay. That's all. Okay. Uh, so let me show you now States Exhibit 1. Uh, do you remember uh, reaching that intersection of Hamburg and Pine Island? Yes. Okay, what happened when you reached that intersection? When we arrived to the light, I the the app from Uber was showing me that to go straight. Okay. And in the light, he told me to to turn to left on okay. Pine Island Road. Okay. Could could you draw where you went left? On this, you pick a color and it can show you. You can. Pick a color? Yeah. He's, and, he's gonna, yeah. This gentleman can show you if you need help. How do I do that? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, is on that this one? Yes. So that's where you went? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, and you were going to go straight. He told you to turn left. Yes. Okay. okay. I have no further questions, uh, Your Honor, of Mr. King. Okay. Defense, any questions? Briefly, yes. Okay. You want any of this, Mr. Curtis? Um, I... Oh, it's there. Thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Hey, good morning. Uh, on this particular day, Mr. Cruz used the Uber pool option, correct? Excuse me? Mr. Cruz used the Uber pool option, correct? Yes. Okay, an Uber pool is a shared ride option, correct? It's less money, but you might have to share your ride with another person. Yes, right? that's right. And there are other... Senior. Oh. There are other options where you wouldn't have to share your ride, correct? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And when, when the um, person orders the Uber pool, they don't know whether they're going to have to share the ride, correct? No, well, they have to know, they have to share the, the ride. Okay, but it didn't happen in this case, but it, it might have happened, right? It, it might, was, yes. It was possible. Yes, it's possible. Okay. Um, and do you remember Mr. Cruz being anxious and nervous when you dropped him off? Yes. Well, that's what I feel. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Okay. State any more questions for this? Yeah, I just have one question. Do you okay. know if Mr. Cruz always used the pool? No. You don't know that? Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're Your Honor, before she goes, can we have a sidebar? Sure. Just one second, please.
think these other five cool overrides uh, part of uh, state's exhibit that's already been introduced in evidence is 252. I can make it a separate. I think you need to make it a separate okay. exhibit. Okay, all right. 252 is already in evidence. Okay. Yeah, it was part of the certification uh, of 252. So we're making a separate. Okay. Is there any objection other than that um, disclosed or argued on the sidebar? Go ahead. Okay, 24H will be received as 254. The jury, we're going to take a, a recess for about 15 minutes. It's 1046. We're going to be in recess until approximately 11 o'clock. Please leave your notepads on your seats. Please do not discuss the case or begin deliberating. And we'll be back with you in about 15 minutes. Thank you.
Come to order, remain seated. Jurors are entering. Uh, the jurors are present. State, call your next witness. Thank you, Gloria
Good morning. Please remain standing. Please raise your right hand. We solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. You can put your hand down and be seated. And uh, if you would please speak into the microphone, state your full name, and spell your last name for the record. Gloria Crespo, C R E S P O. And uh, what's your occupation? I'm a sergeant for Broward Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been a sergeant? A sergeant, a year. Okay. And prior to becoming a sergeant, what did you do? I was a crime scene detective. Okay. And how long were you a crime scene detective? Approximately three, six years. Sorry. Six years, sorry. Approximately six years as okay. detective. How long have you been in law enforcement? 22 years. And when did you start? 1999. Okay. I'd like to, what training have you had uh, to be a, a crime scene investigator? Uh, I've done se uh, several classes um, in crime scene, and also we have an extensive training where it's a one-on-one -on -one training with another field training officer of the discipline, um, and we have many, many hours and months uh, with that training. Okay. Uh, how many crime scenes have you been to in your career as a crime scene investigator? Oh, uh, it, it's... In the hundreds, I'd say. Okay. I'd like to call your attention uh, to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Were you on duty on that day? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, you called upon to respond to a certain location? Yes, sir. And where did you respond to? Responded to 5901 Pine Island Road, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. Okay. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School? Yes, sir. Okay. And did you go to any particular building? Yes, sir. And what building did you go to? Uh, we went to, I went to the third story building on campus, the only one on campus, and it's uh, the 12 building, also known as a 1200 building. Okay, and that's on the northeast side of the uh, Marjorie Stone Douglas campus? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, were you given a particular assignment on yes. that day? Yes, I was. And uh, Sergeant, what was your assignment? My assignment was uh, to document the third floor and also the stairwells. Okay. So uh, let me show you now um, state's exhibits marked 11Q, 11 11Z, 11 11 11L, right, this is 11O, 11N, and ask you, uh, Sergeant, if you can identify these uh, photographs. Yes, sir. <clears throat> City Eleven Q. Okay, um, the first one I'm looking at is going to be it's a photograph I took, um, and it is of the stairwell. Okay. Um, I'm looking, and this is the west stairwell. I'm looking at a soft rifle bag. It's a black bag. Uh, right. Cabela. You talking about the east brand. stairwell? It's the east stairwell. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And that state's exhibit mark eleven uh, uh, N. It's the same photograph of that east stairwell. Uh, there's also the backpacks that were left behind at the time. Um, and it's a Left behind by the students? By the students, yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the black soft rifle bag is on the first step. It's a Cabela bag. Okay. And that states exhibit uh, 11 now. This is a closer look at that Cabela bag. Uh, it's, a, it's a soft rifle bag. Okay. You took that photograph? Yes, sir. And that's uh, 11 O. Inside of this bag, I collected or I found um, red earpiece uh, that is, is used to... Can you can you speak up? Get sure. Sword, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a it's a, it's red ear piece. It's a red ear piece um, for usually used so you cannot hear. Um, so it it's a, it it muffles out any type of noise, um, and it's it's usually used in the range okay. for us. For range shooting. Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I would like to offer states exhibits eleven Q, eleven O, eleven L, and eleven N. Mr. Sam. 
Yes, ma'am. Move 401 and 403, please. Okay, over the defense objection states 11L will be received as 255. 11N as in Nancy, 256, 11O, 257, and 11Q, Crespo, I'm going to show you uh, State's Exhibit Mark 255. Is that uh, the Cabela bag you're talking about? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, there appears to be a cell phone with wires attached. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to show you a close-up State's Exhibit 250. Is that the same Cabela bag and the same phone? Yes, sir. And were you present when that phone was collected later that day? From the tech, um, detect detective, yes. Okay. And a uh, close up of uh, the Cadella bag, 258. And is that the, the hearing? The hearing, uh, the hearing protection, yes, sir. Right? Yes. Okay. Now let me show you State's Exhibit <coughs> Mark 11P. It is, is? it is the same here in protection that I collected that day. Okay, the here in protection you collected? Yes, sir. And reflected in the photograph 250? Yes, sir. Okay, now at this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 11P. Is there any objection? Just four or one, Okay, over the defense objection, states exhibit 11P as in Paul for identification will be received at 259. And at this time, uh, Sergeant Crespo, I want to show you states exhibit 11M. That is the Cabela bag I collected on that date. And you took photographs of them. Yes. The photographs we just showed. I just showed. Them. Yes, sir. All right, Your Honor. This time I'd like to offer a State's Exhibit 11M. Okay. Rule 401. Okay. Over the defense objection, State's Exhibit 11M, as in Mary, will be received as 260. And after you were in the East Stairwell, Sergeant, did you have occasion to go to the West Stairwell? Yes, sir. And I want to show you state's exhibits marked 11S, 11T, 11U, 11W, and 11X. 
Can I ask you, Sergeant, if you can uh, take a look at these photographs and see if you recognize what they, those are, please? Yes. It's the first floor landing of that stairwell. The west stairwell? Yes, the west stairwell. Um, the same, that west stairwell, first floor landing. Again, it's the same west stairwell over by the emergency exit by the stairwell. And then it's a photograph of a fired cartridge Commonly called a casing? Commonly called a casing, yes. And another photograph of a fired casing. Your Honor, I, this, uh, and you took these photographs? I did. And they, they truly accurately depict the casings and the doorway and the west stairwells you saw on February the 14th, 2018? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer 11X, 11W, or 11U, 11T, and 11S. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. Okay. Without objection, 11S, like Sam, will be received as 261. 11T, like Tom, will be received as 262. 11U will be received as 263. 11W, 264. And 11X, like X-ray, 265. I want to show you now state's exhibit <coughs> marked 11V, like in victory. Yes. See if you can identify that. These are the two fired casings that I collected from that I'm stairwell. Sorry, yeah. okay. These are the two fired casings that I collected from that stairwell. From the west stairwell? Yes, the west, west stairwell, which is also known as 1200A. Okay. And the west stairwell is 1200B. The east stairwell. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, this time I'd like to offer states to 11B. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. States exhibit 11B, like Victor, without objection, will be received as states 266. show you um, States Exhibit 261, uh, and you described that there was a casing there, near the doorway, the west doorwell? Yes. All right, could you, could you, you know how to use the telestrator? No. Is it with my finger, or is there a... <laughs> okay. Okay. And this door, uh, well, to my right, that leads out to the outside, correct? Yes, it does. It's from the stairwell to the outside. Okay. And now I want to show you State's Exhibit Mark 265. And that's the other casing? Yes. So there are the two casings you found in the west stairwell, correct? Yes. Here's a 264 close up that, right? Yes. And show you the state's exhibit. Mark 263 has kind of a perspective shot. So the door leading to the outside would be where? There's two doors leading to the outside, one from the stairwell, which says exit. And then the other, two, and the other two doors are in the hallway of the first floor, which you see to the right. But from that stairwell, the exit door, the one that's right there, okay. exit is the only door to the stairwell. All right. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit marked 105. It's already been introduced in evidence. And you recognize who that is? Yes, sir. All right, who is that? That's Scott Weiss. 
Aaron Feist? Aaron Feist, yes. Okay. Sorry. And this would be on the other side of that door? Yes. Yes, that's Coach Vice. Let me show you now. On the other side. Yes. You know who that is? Yes. Who is that? That's victim, Madam Pollock. Are you sure it's not Jamie Pop? Jamie Guttenberg, outside the door? <coughs> this is on the first floor. This is the first floor. Right. You don't recognize who that is? I, I don't right now, no. Oh, okay. All right. I can't recognize that. Okay. After you uh, were in the West Stairwell, where did you go? I went to the third floor. I went to the well, I went back to the east stairwell, and then I went up to the third floor. Okay. And uh, did you go to the what part of the third floor did you go to first? From the east stairwell, um, entering that that end. Towards which the classroom over there was 1256. That's where I came in, okay. which would be our. All right. Did you ever go to the west third floor west stairwell? Did I ever go through the west stairwell? Yes. Okay. Let me show you states exhibits mark 12N, 12G, and 11Z. And ask you if you can identify those photographs. Yes. All right. Did you take those photographs? I did. And did those photographs accurately? accurately and truly depict the third floor west stairwell landing as they existed when you were there on Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer state's exhibits 12N, 12G, and 12Z. Is it 12Z or 11? 11Z. Okay. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. We just incorporate all grounds for objection as detailed as DMIL 12, please. Okay, thank you. So noted. Great. States exhibit 11 Z like zebra will be received as 267. States 12G as in George will be received as 268, and states 12N like Nancy will be received as Show you now state's exhibit mark 267. Sergeant, tell us what that is. That is um, bl a black vest, it's, the, it's an empire vest. Right, you want to it's, you, vest please? it's used to carry magazines. You gotta get it's, a, it's an empire black vest used to carry magazines, which a magazine is what you would put a bullets into. Um, and that vest had five magazines stored in it, along with, um, had, so it has different pockets. Uh, in the right pocket, it had a, an ID to the Nassau County Police, um, to Roger Cruz. 
Um, so I, when I took everything out of that vest, um, I found five magazines, one of 40 capacity, which basically what that would mean is that it holds 40 bullets. The rest of 30 capacity uh, is what came out of that vest. Um, then you'll see it is a Smith & Wesson M10, MP15 rifle. Um, and it has it has um it is it is lo it is is loaded, which meaning that the magazine is in the well um, and ready to be fired. Uh, was there then, one in the chamber? There was one in the chamber. Okay. What does that mean? That it's ready to pull the trigger and fire. Okay. And did you collect the vest and the five magazines? I did. And did you collect the? Uh, Smith & Wesson uh, M&P 15 TF-162-14, that's a serial number, correct? Yes. Okay, you collected that? Yes. And you collected the ground that was in uh, the chamber and the 22 grounds that were in the magazine, Yes. Correct? Okay, and I want to show you now State's Exhibit 268. Is that a close-up of the vest as you found it? Yes. Okay, and State's Exhibit uh, 269. That where the rifle was. Yes. Would you do me a favor and circle where the, the rifle? Okay. Now I want to show you. TF 16214. Okay. Is that the rifle that you collected on the third floor stairwell? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer 12A. Is there any objection? Rule 401, 403, please. Over the defense objection, what's been marked for identification as 12A will be received as 270. Live round that was found in, in that chamber? stairwell. This is yes, my chamber round. That's why it's separated. And then this is the 23 rounds that came out of the magazine. Uh, they're separated because they're separated by head stamp. So basically, a head stamp is the brand of the ammunition. So if we look at it as, like, say, pocketbooks, you have Gucci as a G, Fendi as an F, Louis Vuitton as an LV. Well. Uh, all the companies, manufacturers for ammunition, will have their head stamp and their lettering on it. That's how we can tell different ammunition. So I separated it by the different companies. Okay, what, are the, what, what are the ammunition? The ammunition on this one um, is going to be 20 marked LC and 3 PMCs. Okay. Which are down here. Okay. Your Honor, uh, this time I'd like to walk this case exhibit uh, 12E <clears throat> and 12C. Is there any objection? Just for 401. Okay. Over the defense objection states 12 C as in Charlie for identification will be received as 271 and 12 E will be received as 272. Okay, so I think at this point I want to offer, show you, and offer you to look at uh, state's exhibit. 12F. Okay. Yes. This is the um, vest that I collected from that stairwell. As you can tell, it was an Empire. It's an Empire brand vest. Um, and this here is where the pouches where you would put the magazines that I had found. Um, and 
then up here on the right side, as I stated, was where the Nassau County Police. Okay. Um, and let me show you the in this pocket here. Okay. And that's yes. the Roger Cruz This is the Roger Cruz Nassau County Police okay. badge. And you found five magazines in the desk, correct? Five magazines, yes. And I just found my local office. States Exhibit uh, 12H. States Exhibit 12F. Defense, any objection? No objection to 12F and object to Rule 401. I'm sorry, no addition to 12H, but we do object to uh, 12F on 401, please. Okay, over the defense objection, 12F F, as in Frank will be received as 273, and 12H will be received as 274. So I can show you now 12D, and do you recognize what that is? Yes, this is the magazine that was removed from that weapon. Okay. Your Honor, offer uh, 12D. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. Uh, rule 401, 403, as well as the previous uh, defense motion to exclude. Thank you. Okay. Over the defense objection, it states 12D, as in Delta, will be received as 275. This is um, one of the magazines that was taken out of the vest. Uh, this is the 40 uh, magazine capacity. So it's 40 can you, can you get capacity. closer? Uh, this is um, one of the magazines that was taken out from the vest, and it's a 40 round capacity. So basically, it can hold up to 40 rounds uh, and separated again by the different companies of manufacturers. Okay, what are the companies of manufacturers? Um, this one, it was 36 WMA. And uh, four RP two two threes. Okay, so there are forty rounds in that forty round magazine that were in the vest. Right? Yes. Okay, Runner. At this time, I'd like to offer State's Exhibit twelve I. Rule four hundred one, please. Okay. Over the defense <coughs> objection, states twelve I will be received as two seventy six. Sergeant, I'll show you. State's Exhibit 12J. This was also removed from the vest. And this is a 30 capacity. Sergeant, could you just please speak up? This is a 30 capacity. It was also removed from the vest. I apologize. Uh, it's one RP and one FC, and then you have seven PMCs here, and then 21 LC. Okay, so 30 rounds? Totaling 30 rounds. 30 rounds. Live rounds, right? Live rounds, yes. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 12J. Is there any objection? This has been Rule 401, thank you. Okay, over the defense objection, stage 12J will be received as stage 277. I'm show you state exhibit 12K. See if you can identify that, Sergeant. 12K is a 30 round magazine that. Sergeant, if you don't mind, Again, <laughs> sorry. Um, this is also a 30 round magazine capacity here, and it's separated by the manufacturer. Uh, I had one WTC, six LCs, two MALs, seven RPs, eight MCs, and six FC rounds to total 30. 30 live rounds. Yes, 30 live rounds. 
time, I'd like to offer states of the minutes. 12K. Is there any objection? Let's move forward along, please. Okay, over the defense objection states 12K for identification will be received as 278. Okay, Sergeant, I want to show you now. State Exhibit 12L. Twelve L is a PMG, which is a brand of the magazine. They have brands as well, um, and that is a thirty-round capacity, uh, separated by the ammunition brand of five RPs, one FC, six PMC, and eighteen LCs, to total thirty live rounds. Twelve L. Is there any objection? Just member of four hundred one. Okay, states exhibit twelve L for identification will be received over the defense objection as two seventy nine. And states exhibit for identification twelve M. Sergeant, take a look at this, please. Yes. This again came out of the vest. It is a 30 round capacity magazine. Uh, I had separated again by ammunition manufacturer, seven PMCs, eight FCs, 14 LCs. This one totaled 29 live rounds. Thank you, Sergeant. Now, now. Exhibit 12M. Is there any objection? Just can move forward one please. Over the defense objection, states 12M as in Mary for identification will be received as state 280. Sergeant, uh, when you were uh, Finished collecting those items on the third floor stairwell. Did you go in to the uh, main hallway? Yes. Okay. I want to show you uh, State's Exhibit 12P and ask you if you can identify this. Yes. What is that? The hallway was separated from west to east by quadrants. Uh, approximately 20 foot quadrants. And we started on the west side, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, ending in 310 to equal 10 quadrants, starting from the east at 31, ending on the west at 310. Why do you do that? In order for collection purposes to be able to, to, to collect them by quadrant, just made sense in, uh, in this type of a case. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer States Exhibit 12P. Is there any objection? No, ma'am. States 12P for identification without objection will be received as States 281. <laughs> so that's how you uh, provide it. The, the quadrants? Yes, sir. Okay, and you started from west to east? Yes. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, right? Okay. 3, 1, 3, 2. Let me show you now. States Exhibit 14C and 14A, and ask you if you can identify them. Yes. This was a classroom 1256 closest to the east stairwell, and uh, laying in front of this classroom was victim Scott Beagle. Scott Beagle? Okay. Yes. And did you take those photographs? I did. 
And is that photo, those two photographs truly and accurately depict uh, Scott Beagle as he appeared outside 1256 on February the 14th, 2018? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to alter uh, State's Exhibit 14C and 14A. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. All grounds for objection in DMIL 12, please. Right. Over the defense objection, states exhibit 14A for identification will be received as 282, and 14C as in Charlie for identification will be received as 283. Yes. And is that outside classroom 1256? Yes. And showing you now 282. Does that give you some kind of perspective where Scott Beagle was? Uh, this is looking in which direction? That is looking towards the west. Okay. And what's the classroom right next door to 1256? 1255. Yes. Who is that? It is Mr. Scott Beagle. Okay, Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 5C. Is there any objection? This yes, one grounds is outlined in BML 12. Okay, over the defense objection, State's Exhibit 5C, like Charlie, will be received as 284. And this was. The gentleman outside 1256, correct? Yes. And I'm going to show you Stacey's exhibits 13B, 13B like in victory, 14I, and 14H. I ask you, Sergeant, can you identify these photographs? Yes. This is outside of the men's bathroom. Uh, labeled as 1247. And then it is a hallway photograph as well of the victims between the bathrooms of. And did you take those photographs? Yes. And did those photographs truly and accurately depict the men's restroom as you saw it when? They were the 14, 2018? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer uh, these exhibits to it. States Exhibit 14H, 14I, 13B, and 130 or O. Mr. Sessman, I just look at them briefly. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
applicants, is there any objection? Just going to incorporate all grounds for objection in DMIL 12, please. Okay, so noted. Over the defense objection, 13-0 will be received as 285. 13-B, like Victor, will be received as 286. 14-H will be received as 287. And 14-I will be received as 288. Showing you now States Exhibit 286. What does that show? That is um right outside the men's bathroom label 1247. Okay, do you want to just put an X where the men's bathroom is there, please? These here are penetration sites, basically bullet holes um, going into that men's bathroom. And is, is that the alcove of the men's restroom door? Yes. And is that the door we're talking about? Yes. Showing you states exhibit mark 288. Is that a close up of that? Yes. And I want to show you now states exhibit 12V for identification. Yes. Let me see if you can identify that. Yes. And what is that? Victim, Joaquin Oliver. Okay, and was that the way he was found when you took that photograph? Yes. On February the 14th, 2018? Yes. Okay, remember this time I'd like to offer state's exhibit mark 12V. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am, again, uh, DMIL 12, please. Okay, over the defense objection, states 12V as in Victor for identification will be received as 289. Is that Joaquin Oliver? Yes. And uh, can you see where the men's restroom was? Yes, it was. Did you put an X? In this direction, okay. right in here, was the alcove. And showing you states exhibit 113. Who was that? That's victim Joaquin Oliver. Twelve U 
12T and 13S. Okay. Let me ask you, Sergeant, can you identify those? Yes, this is a photograph looking towards the west hallway and it shows victim Peter Wang. This photograph here is photograph, same thing, towards the west hallway, starting at about where the woman's bathroom is, and it shows four victims, uh, victim Meadow Pollock, victim Kara Lofran, Joaquin Oliver, and Peter Wang. And then this is a photograph in between the bathrooms, um, and it shows some of two victims and victim Carol Lofran. Okay. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibits 12U, 12T, and 13S. Is there any objection? It's been all uh, grounds as detailed in the amount 12. Yes, thank you. States 12T for identification will be received as 290. States 12U for identification will be received as 291. And states 13S will be received as 292. States Exhibit 291. Who is that? That is Carol Lofren. Okay, and is that the way you found her? Yes. And States Exhibit 290. Laying um, prone, which is head down, is going to be Meadow Pollock, and then Kara, and then Joaquin Oliver, and all the way by the west end of the hallway is Peter Wang. It's Peter Wang. Show you now, states exhibit R twelve W. This is a close-up picture of Peter Wang. Okay, and that's the way you found them on February 14, 2018? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, I'd like to offer states in here 12W. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. Same grounds for objection as outlined in GMI 12, please. Okay, over the defense objection, states 12W will be received as states 293. States 293. That is Peter Wang. Right, that's right with where the stairwell is. And now showing you states of the 14K. You recognize that photograph? Yes, this is that west wall over where the stairwell is and where Peter Wang was. Where he was, and he's re obviously removed in this photograph. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 14K. Is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. All brands is outlined in DML 12, as well as the previous objection made to S237 based on the investigative markings. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Over the defense objection, 14K will be received as 294.
Mike Chung, you now have the uh, Sergeant 294. Tell me what that is. That is the west wall, and all the markings is a document in the wall. Okay. And uh, you can see that there's uh, that, that window there? Yes. Where is that window? That, that window faces the campus towards the east, towards the west side, um, and there is strike marks on that window. Let me show you now. State's Exhibit 14J. I see if you can identify that. Yes. What is that? This is that same window, just a close-up picture of that window. Okay, with the strike marks that you mentioned? Where the strike marks, yes. Thank you. Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 14J. Is there any objection? Is there any objection? No, ma'am. Did you say no? No, ma'am. Okay, without objection, 14J will be received as states 295. Okay, here's 295. And is it the strike marks you're talking about? Yes, sir. And this is looking out west, correct? This is looking out west, yes. Exhibits marked 13Z, 14G, 14F, and 14E. Okay. This is a bullet hole of penetration site of in room 1255 and documentation of the projectile flight, how, how the projectile went through the room um, in room 1255. Uh, all these photographs are documenting that. Okay. And 1255 is next to classroom 1256? Yes. And 1256 you described for the jury where Scott Beagle was? Correct? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit 13Z, 14G, 14F, and 14E. Thank you. Defense, is there any objection? Yes, ma'am. May we go sidebar briefly, please? Sure. Okay, over the defense objection states 13Z will be received as 296, 14E will be received as 297, 
14F298 and 14G299. show you the first state's exhibit 296. Okay. Please tell us what that is. It's uh, the fire cartridge fire cartridges or fire casings as we stated before um, all around the front of classroom 1255. Okay, and where's 1256? 1256 is going to be right here and then this is 12 55. And now showing you State Exhibit uh, 299. What's that? This is showing penetration sites. Um, Do you want to circle? Forward? Yes, I'm going to right now, uh, which is basically our, our layman's terms, our, our bullet hole, which is going to be here. I'm sorry, I kind of covered it a little. Here, I'll give you another There. Chance. It's right there. Um, and then right here. Okay. Okay. And space exhibit mark 298. Well, before you do that, let me show you space exhibit 297. That is a close up picture of, of that penetration site. Okay. And now 298. This is the, the other side of it. When you say the other side. This is the other side of that wall. So it went through, and we use um, ballistic trajectory rods, basically a forensic tool, uh, to show us the flight path of the, of the of basically the projectile. So when we do this, uh, we, we look at, we, we study the, the interior of it and to know where the penetration site is, so where that bullet hole first went in is usually a cleaner, um, Entrance, and then when it comes out, you see what you see there. It's a, it, it, it is it is not as clean per se as, as the beginning, right? So uh, with those trajectory rods, we're able to figure out the flight path. And in this, it went through the wall into the cabinet, and it ended on the north side of the Promethean board in that classroom. Okay, so this we're look, we're standing. If we're looking at this. We're standing. In the we're standing, looking at this north wall, but in this room would be south. Right? But yes, it's that north wall that where that bully sign was. It's just going right through. Okay, but we're standing in the classroom. Now. Yes, you're standing inside the classroom. Now I'm going to show you State's Exhibit Mark 13N for identification. And ask you if you can identify this. Yes. This was a this was a found on quadrant three four on the third floor, and it's a rail cover um, in, in the hallway, and it was collected in quadrant three four. Holding up now, uh, State's Exhibit 281, which is the quadrant diagram. Yes. Testify it out. So, so where did you find this rail cover? We can't see it. Yeah. Now we can. Okay. It was, so this is the alcove to the woman's restroom here. No, I can't see it. <laughs> I can't see it either. 
So right here is, is, that, is that alcove? Um, I don't have the red pen, so I can show you. So 1248, where the alcove is, it was right in the interior. Hold on for one second. Ian's going to. Okay. There we go. Right there. Oh, look, my fingers are there. So, yes, it was in this little alcove, and it was like right there. Yes. Okay. And it's a real cover for what? It's a real cover for the firearm and basically a rail cover is attached usually to the barrel and that's because it gets hot and it, it protects protects you from is, is usually the, the reason for the rail cover. Okay, Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit Mark uh, 13N. Is there any objection? Rule 401, please. Okay, over the defense objection, State's 13N, like Nancy, will be received as State's 300. Okay, now, uh, Sergeant, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 13L, 13K, 13J, 13I, 13H, 13G, 13D, 13C, 13B, 13A, 12Z, 12Y, and 12X for identification. I'm going to ask you if you can identify these photographs. Okay. Yes. These photo, the first couple here are going to be in front of the teacher's lounge, room 1240. And to the interior of that teacher's lounge in 1240, uh, it shows the uh, it shows the strike marks on the windows of that room. And the documentation of that. It also shows the fired casings um, in, in that room and a magazine that was left behind. More fired car car cartridges. There's another room within that room, um, and it shows that, that there was also evidence of firearms going into that room. Uh, more fired cartridges uh, and more fired cartridges. And this was within, then there's a photograph of within the room, uh, a fire cartridge on the ground there as well. And how many uh, fire cartridge casings did you find in 1240? Uh, 12. I'm sorry, 10. It's 10. 10 in there, not 12. Okay. I'm thinking there was a live round, too. <laughs> All right, Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer standing to this 12X, 12Y, 12Z, 13A, 13B, 13C, 13D, 13G, 13H, 13I, 13J, 13K, 13L. Can I just look at some briefness? Sure. Thank you.
Just make the same objections as made to uh, S two three seven regarding markings in the scene being different. Okay. Thank you. Objection. The exhibits will be received as the following 12X, like X ray 301, 12Y 302, 12Z, like zebras 303, 13A, like alpha 304, 13B, like bravo 305, 13C, like charlie 306, 13D, delta 307. 13G 308, 13H 309, 13I 310, 13J 311, 13K 312, and 13L 313. Yes. While those are being marked, I would ask that the state exhibit 270 be placed back in the box, or at least the muzzle being not pointed towards the journal case. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, and I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. You said 270? State's 270 judge is the AR-15. It's on the floor. Um, okay. It's beyond Mr. Satz's judge. That's why I can't see it. And so what do you, I'm sorry, what do you I'd ask that it be placed back in the evidence box, or at least have the muzzle pointed in the safe direction. I'll put it in the same direction. Right at me. Emmy. <laughs> hmm? I said and me. If it's pointing at you, it's pointing at me, but I No. You no. explained that your witness explained that it's been yeah. made safe, correct? Yeah. Alright. is going to be the one fired casing collected from room 1240A. So this is that second room that we described within that first room, which is a teacher's lounge. So you get the picture. Um, and then here are going to be the other fired casings that are in that big main room that you're going to see. Um, and it is a 
quantity of nine and the one which is ten, which is what I stated um, from both. Yeah, this time I like to offer states it's 13F. And 13E. Is there any objection? Move forward one, please. Okay, over the defense objection states 13E will be received as 314, 314, and states 13F, like Frank, will be received as 315, 315. Um, states exhibit 13M. This is uh, the 40 round capacity uh, magazine that I stated was in that room as well. And you're going to see it's on a desk. Uh, this is that empty magazine that was recovered from there. Uh, up to 40 bullets can fit in here, like I've stated before. That's what okay. that holds. And it was empty, right? It was empty. Okay. Your Honor, this time I'd like to offer State's Exhibit uh, 13M. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, over the defense objection states exhibit 13M, like Mary, will be received as 316. Okay. Sergeant, first I want to show you uh, states exhibit uh, 301. What's that? That is a view of that teacher's lounge, room 1240, um, looking at it from east to west. Okay. So we're talking about the northwest uh, section third floor hallway, correct? Yes. Okay. And states exhibit uh, 302. That is going to be a view of that same teacher's lounge, room 1240, but this is from south to north. Okay. And states exhibit 303. This is that same room now in the interior of the room. Uh, which it depicts the windows okay. and your strike marks on the windows. Okay. Uh, the windows. Uh, which direction? Uh, which directions are they? Point, uh, are the windows facing? Do you know. The yeah. windows are facing towards the west. Okay. And how about the one window on the left? This window here. Yeah. This window is facing towards the south. Okay. Okay. And showing you States Exhibit uh, 304. What's that, that, that is our north, I mean, that is our west view and the strike marks on that window. States Exhibit 305. That is going to be that north view um, and the strike marks there, which is is a way to get back to that west side. It's the walking path in that school. Okay. And States Exhibit 307, is that a close-up? Yes, documenting. And States Exhibit 308. This is um, it, it, uh, right below that north and west where the windows are there. So, uh, and these are some fired cartridges. And then here is that empty magazine that was taken from that room okay. that collected. Okay. States Exhibit. This is that back room that I spoke of, which is 1240A. Uh, and then here's some uh, just more casings. And 310. Closer up to that entrance to that back room. And 311. Other casings that were found. And 312. Behind the desk, once it was moved, there was also other casings discovered here. Sorry. And lastly, 313. 
These are photographs. This is inside that room that I talked about. And then that's where the one casing was recovered, fire casing. Showing you State's Exhibit Mark 14D. This is a, another 40 capacity magazine that I recovered from Quadrant 39. This was beside Scott Beagle. Um, so, and it was empty. Okay, so looking at uh, our schematic. Uh, three nine is going to be right here. Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer State's Exhibit. Fourteen D. Is there any objection? This one, no, it's in four hundred one, please. Okay, over the defense objection, states 14D, like Delta, will be received as state 317, 317. <coughs> State's Exhibit marked 313P. These are the fired casings that we just, when we discussed how everything was set up into quadrants, uh, this is quadrant 31, which would have been the quadrant further west by victim Peter Wang. Uh, and again, uh, I do them by the make of the manufacturer for that fire casing. So here we have one R uh, E M eight Lake City, which is L C, uh, one P M C, and one F C. So there are ten casings in. There is a total of ten casings here. Yes. In uh, Q one, right? In Q in Q three one. Three one. Okay. And show you now State's Exhibit 13R. This is going to be our quadrant 3-2. And we have one PMC, two LCs, and one REM. So that's four Total casings. of four casings in quadrant 3-2. And shown in the States Exhibit, Mark 13U. Following on quadrant 3-3 is going to have five LCs, one PMC, a total of six. Okay. Fire casings, right? Fire casings, yes. Showing you now States Exhibit 13W. This is quadrant three, four, and we have one PMC and one LC, a total of two casings in quadrant three, four. And state's exhibit mark 13X. Here we have quadrant three, seven, and one LC was collected from quadrant three seven one fire casing. States exhibit mark thirteen Y. This is our quadrant three eight. I had fourteen LCs, one WMA, two REMs for a quantity of 17 in this quadrant 3A. And they're down here, separately packaged. And identification 14B. 
This is going to be quadrant 3, 9. And there was 11 there. It's going to be 4 PMCs, 7 LCs, for a total of 11, which are here, separated again. Okay, so uh, you had 51. It totaled to 51 in the hallway. And 10 and 1240 for a total of 61 casings, correct? 61 casings in the third floor. Right. Okay, Your Honor, at this time, I'd like to offer state's exhibits 14B. Thirteen Y Thirteen X Thirteen W Thirteen U Thirteen R and Thirteen P. Just in relevancy of 401, please. Okay, over the defense objection, states 13P as in Paul will be received as 318, states 13R will be received as 319, 13U will be received as 320, 13W will be received as 321, 13X will be received as 322. 13Y will be received as 323, and 14B will be received as 324. Thank you, Okay, uh, now, Sergeant, I want to uh, show you for identification State's Exhibit uh, 14O, 14L. 14S, 14U, 14T, 14B, like in Victor, 14R, 14N, 14M, 14P, and 14Q. And ask you if you can identify these. Okay, 14Q is going to be a swab of the magazine of 40 capacity taken from the vest. So what I mean by swabs, if I can explain to the jury, is um, we, we take swabs of items to get possible presence of DNA. Um, and, and in this, that's what I was doing, is I was swabbing uh, the magazines and other articles uh, to try to get that presence of DNA. Uh, the swab, this is another swab, and this is a swab of the vest. I swabbed the zipper, the collar, and the pouch flags, flaps of that vest. Um, this is a swab of the magazine uh, 1240D1. So this is going to be to the room 1240. I identify it that way. So this is that magazine that was on the desk. It's a swab of that magazine. This here is going to be a swab of the magazine that came from the MP MP15 gun. Uh, this here is going to be a swab from the vest, um, one of the 30 capacity magazines. This here is a swab um, of the soft rifle. I swabbed the carry handles and also it had a sling, so it goes across your body, again, for the possible presence of DNA. So that came from that, from the Cabela uh, soft rifle that we saw at the beginning. This is a swab from the vest, again, from another magazine, a 30 capacity magazine. This here is a swab uh, from a 30 capacity in the vest as well. I'll keep the vest up here. Uh, 
another vest swab of another magazine. This swab is of the weapon. I swab the trigger, the grip, the charging handle, and the foregrip of the weapon. This is a swab of uh, that ear that earpiece, the earmuff style that was in that Cabela bag, the soft rifle bag. I went ahead and I swabbed the earpiece and the head strap to that as well. And that's all the swabs that. And the last one is exhibit 14W. Okay. This swab is of a, that magazine in that quadrant 39 that was empty, also that 40 capacity. You saw that's a swab of that magazine. Okay. And uh, lastly, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit 14X. This is the buccal collection kit uh, that I took of uh, Nicholas Cruz. Mm -hmm. uh, a buccal is a DNA of, of a person, and uh, I was uh, I received an order to go okay. take that. You, you took a, a swab. Yes. All right. And do you see the person you took a swab of a buccal swab of here today? Yes. Would you point him out? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Sitting with a blue sweater and a light blue mask. Okay, Madam Reporter, please let the record reflect that uh, Sergeant uh, Crespo identified the attorney Nicholas Cruz, please. Your Honor, at this time, I have no further questions of uh, Sergeant Crespo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. When you go to um, process a crime scene, you have a specific protocol that you follow, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, after uh, getting an assignment and then visually inspecting whatever it is you're going to process, you immediately take photographs of the area, correct? Yes. Okay. And you do this because in processing a crime scene, you often have to alter it the crime scene, correct? What do you mean alter it? Well, move things. Um, if you use any tools to do it, it might change things up a little bit. You take <coughs> photographs initially before you make any changes or process anything, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, several of the photographs that you just testified about were photographs that you took prior to processing the crime scene. Yes. Correct? Okay. <clears throat> so those initial photos that you take would most accurately represent the way that the crime scene looked just after the crime before you do anything to it. Yes. Okay. Um, you testified about uh, of several swabs, DNA swabs that you took, correct? Yes. Okay, and did you receive results from those? I send them to the lab and the detective uh, receives the, the homicide detective receives the results. Okay. Um, you also swab the uh, <coughs> handles of the windows inside that teacher's lounge, correct? I did not. Okay. And I want to show you um, what you previously noted as the window from inside that. Um, and this is Exhibit 306. You testified that that's the a window inside of the teacher's lounge, correct? Uh, 
I'd have to take a look at another photograph to be able to. Okay. Because okay. that view. It's too close for you to. Yeah, I, I believe it is though. Just looking at the angle. That, that's to the. I'll show you a couple more. That's fine. I'm going to show you before I come back to this one. I'll show you up. Um, Three Do you recognize that? that yes. Thing? Okay. And then that's a further out shot. Yes. Uh, okay, so this is inside the teacher's lounge, correct? Right? Yes. 303. Okay, and this is just a close up shot of one of those windows. Correct? Okay. Yes. Okay. And so to open these windows, you just pull up on the little. Objection. You pull up on the little, um, I don't know how to do it, but the little handle thing, and then just pull the window open, correct? Yes. May I have a moment, Judge? Sure. I don't have any more questions. Thank you, ma'am. State, anything else? For no further questions. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're excused. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we're going to take a lunch break. Um, it's almost one o'clock. I'm going to ask you to please be back at one. No, not one. Hold on. <laughs> one two. Please be back at two thirty, um, and so we can begin our afternoon session. Please leave your notebooks behind. Please do not discuss the case. Um, please do not begin deliberating or have any discussion whatsoever with anyone outside of the courtroom or inside the courtroom, for that matter. Thank you very much for your patience.
So please raise your right hand. Please solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you, sir. You can put your hand down and be seated. And when you're seated, please state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Uh, 
Uh, hello, my name is Stephen, S-T-E-P-H-E-N, middle initial L, last name Robinson, R-O-B-I-N-S-O-N. Good afternoon, Dr. Robinson. Good afternoon, sir. What is your occupation, sir? I'm the Deputy Chief Medical Examiner. And where are you a Deputy Chief Medical Examiner? Broward County uh, Medical Examiner and Trauma Services. How long have you uh, worked at the Broward County uh, Medical Examiner's Office? Seven years. What, what is your education? A Bachelor of Science degree from Syracuse University, four years. Medical School, Howard University, four years. Medical degree. Um, Residency in anatomic and clinical pathology, four years, ending in board certification. One year forensic pathology, uh, ending in board certification. Okay, and where have you worked since uh, your medical degree? I have been, I was employed by the U.S. Navy, uh, multiple duty stations, uh, most recent duty stations, Dover Air Force Base. And how long were you in the Navy? 30 years. And then you uh, retired in what year? Uh, July 1st, 2015. What rank were you? Captain. Okay. Uh, do you have any uh, certifications? I do. I have uh, certification in anatomy and clinical pathology certified. I have certification in forensic pathology certified. Okay. Um, and you're licensed to practice medicine where? I'm licensed to practice medicine in Nevada, Florida, and Maryland. Okay. I'd like to uh, call your attention to Wednesday, February the 14th, 2018. Do you have occasion to respond to a certain location? I did. Where did you respond to? Um, Marjorie Storm, uh, MSD High School. Okay. And uh, you went there because why? I was uh, the deputy chief medical examiner as I was responding uh, at the uh, direction of my boss, who was uh, the chief medical examiner, Dr. Malik. Okay. Um, as a um, medical examiner, uh, have you testified as an expert in forensic pathology before? I have. And how many times? Uh, 20 to 30, best I can tell. In what courts? Both federal and civil. Okay. So when you responded to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, what did you do? Basically, at the, when we first got there, we uh, I was met by three investigators. Uh, initially, we waited for FBI to complete the crime scene investigation. Uh, at that point, uh, myself and the three investigators um, entered the building and basically completed photo photography on the decedents and basically uh, placed the decedents in human rain pouches for transportation back to our office. Okay. On Thursday, uh, February the 15th, 2018, do you have occasion to perform an autopsy? I did. Okay. Let me show you uh, state's exhibits. I'm going to read this into the record, Doctor. Um, 21H, 21G, 21F, 21E, 21D, 21C, 21D, 21A, 20Z, and 5E. Dr. Robinson, you good enough to take a look at these exhibits? And Yes, sir. I do. I do. And who is that? This is our case 18 0530, also identified as Nicholas Dorrett. Okay. Uh, and you performed an autopsy on Nicholas Dorrett? I did. Did you happen to see Nicholas Dorrett when you were at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas on March, uh, on February the 14th, 2018? 
I did. All right. At this time, with these photographs, Dr. Aid you in explaining to the court and to the jury the nature of Nicholas Dorette's wounds and his cause of death. Yes, they would. Okay, thank you. Your Honor, at this time I'd like to offer uh, State's Exhibits 21H, 21G, 21F, 21E, 21A, 21C, 21B, 21A, 20Z, 5, 5E, that's where you have it, it's, that's 206. So you said 5E is already entered as 206? Yes, yeah, that's 206. Okay. to admission of photographs based on you know, all the objections and ground uh, line D and I have 12, please. Okay, so noted. Over the defense objection, states 20Z as in zebra for identification will be received as 325. 20Z like zebra will be entered as 325. 21A as in alpha, 326. 21B like Bravo, 327. 21C like Charlie, 328. 21D as in Delta, 329. 21E will be entered as 330. 21F as in Frank, 331. 21G as in George, 332. And 21H, 333. Dr. Wilder, put some mark in that. I want to show you the state exhibit 206. Do you recognize that person? I do. Is that Nicholas Durrett? It is. And age and height and weight? 17 years, uh, 72 inches in length, and he weighed 174 pounds. Just want to. Wait for these photographs, though. There are, there are some marks on the screen. I don't know if you can see them. There's like four arrows yes, I, I got and it. some check marks. There you go. Thank you.
Okay, Dr. Robinson, I want to show you State's Exhibit Mark uh, 325 that has been introduced in evidence. And uh, could you uh, explain? You have that labeled wound A, correct? That is correct. Okay, and uh, could you tell us what that is and what damage that wound caused? Uh, what we're looking at, uh, the wound labeled A, is an entrance gunshot wound. Uh, basically, what the damage it caused, it basically passed through his right shoulder going under the right clavicle or collarbone, uh, lacerating, transecting the uh, right subclavian artery and vein, also noted as the right subclavian vessels. I'm sorry, could you just speak up a little bit? Oh, well, okay. If you wouldn't mind just scooting the a little bit towards the microphone, that would probably be helpful. Okay. Uh, again, um, the bullet passed under the right clavicle or the collarbone. Uh, at that point, transected or lacerated major vessels, specifically the right subclavian artery and the right subclavian vein. It proceeded to pass through the upper part of the right lung. From there, it entered the pericardium, which is the heart sac surrounding the heart. Um, at that point, it also lacerated um, what's called the right main bronchus, which is a breathing tube that goes into the right lung. It lacerated uh, the aorta, which is the major vessel leaving the heart. It actually passed through the left side of the heart, exited the uh, lower left side of the heart, um, passed through the lower portion of the left lung, and lodged in the left side of the chest wall. Was that wound in and of itself fatal? It was. Okay. Now, I'll show you Stacey's exhibit marked um, 326, Dr. Robinson. Can you tell us what that is? This uh, labeled our number 180530, this is a graze wound. It was a grazing gunshot wound of his abdomen. Okay. And a graze wound is what? A graze wound is when the bullet passes very close to the skin but doesn't enter the body or lacerate the skin, but basically abrades it or scrapes it as it passes by. Mm -hmm. And show you State's Exhibit 327. Again, okay, this is uh, labeled 18-0530. This is for orientation purposes. This is the left thigh, the front of the left thigh. And it's a very similar wound. This is a graze wound, of the grazing gunshot wound of the left thigh. Okay. The graze wound to the left thigh and to the abdomen. Can you tell whether those, those two graze wounds were prior to the shot, uh, the fatal shot uh, in the shoulder that went through his heart? I cannot. Okay. So you can't say if they're post-mortem or anti-mortem? That's correct. And showing you stage exhibit 328. What we're looking at for orientation purposes is the right hip. And the uh, wound label B is a what's a ballistic injury, a penetrating ballistic injury. Okay. Uh, and what is significance is that wound? What? It, it's, it's a wound caused by fragments, uh, sometimes referred to as shrapnel, not specifically a gunshot wound in, in, the, in so much that you have a projectile, which is fragments uh, that are, that are uh, traveling. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Could you just scoot a little scoot. bit? Scoot, okay. Um, uh, basically, this is a, a type of wound that is called ballistic injury. It's not a gunshot wound per se because we don't have an intact or partial projectile. It's more of like fragments flying. Uh, like we said, something has been referred to as shrapnel before. And this is a penetrating... Um, injury here, and this was, uh, this one penetrated to a depth of approximately one-eighth inch, so it was fairly superficial. Was there hemorrhaging in the wound? There was. And what does that indicate? That indicates that there was uh, blood pressure and most likely uh, represents anti-mortem injury. So prior to the shot in the shoulder? Mm -hmm. Prior to or very close in proximity to. And States Exhibit 329, Dr. Robinson. Again, for orientation purposes, we're still in the right hip, just a little bit lower down. Um, this is also a, a ballistic, penetrating ballistic injury. As we talked about, it's basically fragments flying. This was a deeper penetration. It went to a depth of approximately three and a half inches into the muscle. Okay, and uh, was there hemorrhaging in this one? There was. In indicative of what? Uh, Anti-mortem injury. Okay, okay, prior to death. Prior to death, yes. Okay, and space exhibit 330. What we're looking at is the uh, side of his right ankle. These are multiple uh, superficial ballistic injuries, um, basically metal fragments and other types of things that are just flying and penetrate the skin at that point. Okay. Uh, 
Dr. Robinson, were you able to determine the cause of death, death of Nicholas Dorette? I was. And what was the cause of death? Gunshot wound of the chest. Okay. And I will show you uh, State's Exhibit 331. And what is that? Uh, the, what we're looking at, uh, labeled uh, the decedent's name, projectile, left chest, is the projectile removed from the decedent's left chest. Okay. Your Honor, I have no further questions of Dr. Robinson. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Thank you, sir. Uh, defense, any questions? No, ma'am. All right, thank you, sir. You're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. You can be seated. Thank you. If you would please um, speak into the microphone, state your full name and spell your last name. Yes, my name is Dr. Wendelin Snee. Last name spelled S N E E D. Good afternoon, Dr. Smith. Good afternoon. What is your occupation? I am the Chief Medical Examiner at the Palm Beach County Medical Examiner's Office. And how long have you been the Chief Medical Examiner in Palm Beach? It will be three years in August. Okay. And prior to that position, where did you work? At the Broward County Medical Examiner's Office. And how long did you work at the Broward County Medical Examiner's Office? About three and a half years. And prior to that? Maricopa County Medical Examiner's Office and in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm sorry? In Phoenix, Arizona. In Phoenix. And how long were you there? About a year and a half. Okay. And before that? I was at the District 21 Medical Examiner's Office in Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. And how long were you there? A little over seven years. Okay. And how about your education? Um, I did my uh, medical school at Ponce School of Medicine in Puerto Rico. I did a um, residency or a specialty in pathology at the Mount Sinai Medical Center of Greater Miami Beach. After that, I did my subspecialty in forensic pathology at the Miami-Dade County Medical Examiner's Office, and then I was hired as a staff in that office for about three and a half years. Okay. Uh, are you board certified? Yes. What are you board certified in? In anatomic pathology, clinical pathology, and forensic pathology. Okay. And are you licensed to practice medicine? Yes, in the state of Florida. Okay. 
I'd uh, like to call your attention to um, Thursday, February the 15th, 2018. Um, where are we working? At the Broward County Medical Examiner's Office. And, uh, what were you uh, doing that day? On that day, I performed multiple autopsies um, in the cases um, associated with the high school shooting. Okay, the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas shooting? Yes. Prior to that date, how many autopsies had been performed? I can't uh, recall. I'm about 3,000 now. Okay. And uh, of those autopsies, were you able to determine the cause of death? Yes, that's part of my job. And approximately what percentage of those autopsies were you determined the cause of death? Was the cause of death caused by gunshot wounds? Um, I don't have the numbers, um, but we do, <coughs> I do, uh, many cases of gunshot wounds. I don't have the actual number. Okay. Uh, have you ever testified as an expert in forensic pathology in a court of record? Yes. How many times? I'm about 50 now. And what courts? In Miami-Dade, in uh, Fort Myers, District 21, in Maricopa, in Broward, and Palm Beach. Okay. I want to show you now states exhibits 20D, 20C, 20B, 20A, 19Z, 
defense objection. What's been marked for identification of states 19Y will be received as 334, 19Z like zebra, 335, 20A as an alpha will be received as 336, 20B as in Bravo will be received as 337, 20C as in Charlie will be received as 338, and 20D as in Delta will be received as 339. I want to show you State's Exhibit marked 334. Can you tell me what that shows? Yes. Um, can you raise it up a little bit so I can see the number, please? Raise right. it up. Raise the oh, photograph okay. up a little bit. Thank you. Yes. So what right. this photograph shows is basically the upper... Um, torso, the anterior aspect of the chest. Um, in this particular photo, towards the top of the photograph, you can see the chin of Mr. Hickson. And then on the, um, to your left side, you can see the right arm. And then on the left upper chest, you can see two defects, which are entrance gunshot wounds. All right, they're both gunshot wounds to the chest. Correct. Okay. Uh, the upper wound, could you tell us what damage that did? Yes, so that particular wound perforated the muscles of the uh, left side of the chest. It also perforated the, um, between the ribs, there are muscles as well that help us breathe. So it perforated the intercostal muscles of the third space. It perforated the left lung, and um, then it went through the muscles of the back. And in doing so, it also fractured the left fourth and the left ninth ribs. Okay. And the lower wound? The lower wound um, was going a different pathway. The lower wound um, perforated the um, chest. It fractured the sternum, which is the uh, bone in the middle of the chest where the um, ribs connect. Um, it also um, perforated the um, Costal cartilages, so the ribs have cartilage on the anterior aspect of multiple ribs, um, seventh through tenth. And then it also perforated the uh, right lung and then the right side of the diaphragm, um, which is a muscle that have, helps us uh, breathe. And then in the abdominal region, it perforated the liver and abdominal muscles. And then it exited through a defect in the abdomen, leaving behind fragments. Either one of those wounds fatal in and of themselves? Yes, would both. Have, both? Yes. So he would have died of either just one wound? Correct. Right. Shown you State's Exhibit Mark 331.
So this particular wound, what you're seeing on this photograph is towards the top of the photograph is the head. You're looking at the back on the left side. This is the exit defect associated to the entrance wound that I just described on the left side of the chest. Not the one near the central portion, but the left upper chest. The higher one. The higher one, correct. And States Exhibit 336. So, um, in this particular photograph, towards the top of the photograph, is chest. You can see some chest hair. And then what you're seeing on the lower aspect of the photograph below the uh, ruler is the abdomen, abdominal region on the right side. And that is the exit defect for the gunshot wound that enter near the midline on the chest. Okay. And now I show you stage exhibit 337. Okay, so um, in this particular photograph, on the top of the photograph, you're seeing the body from the right side, and um, this is what we call anterolateral. So if you look at the thigh, approximately meaning upper thigh, a little bit anterior but a little bit to the right side, that's the anterolateral aspect. That's an entrance gunshot wound defect. So, in this particular photograph, you're looking at the right thigh again, but a little bit from the posterolateral aspect. So, if you look at the thigh from the right side, and you look at the lateral aspect, which is, you know, of the thigh, then you move slightly backwards or posteriorly, and that is the exit defect of this um, gunshot wound pathway. And, uh, the cause of death of Christopher Nixon. Multiple gunshot wounds. Uh, what happens when a bullet snow? What is a bullet snowstorm in you? When, um, so different firearms, different projectiles, different calibers. Um, they um, when they course through the body, um, they look differently. In the case of rifles which are high velocity um, firearms, the projectiles tend to um, break down as it enters the body, hits the, the, the person, it tends to fragment and break down as it goes through um, the wound pathway. And when we uh, take an x-ray of the body, we can see that um, it's called snowstorm, right? That's what it looks, looks like, the projectiles are the um, radio peg fragments of the, you know, fractured projectile, and it leaves it leaves like a cloud of metal or you know fragments throughout the pathways. Mm -hmm. And showing you states exhibit three thirty nine. Is this, this what? Fragments look like when they snowstorm. Those are two fragments that I collected from the pathways, and yes, um, that's what they look when they're fragmented. On that day, uh, Dr. Sneed, did you perform another autopsy? I did. And who did you perform that other autopsy? Peter Wong. Showing you states exhibit 115. Yes. And now I want to show you Twenty-eight, 
and 23. Which means if you would take a look at these exhibits and let me know if you recognize them in conjunction with your autopsy of Peter Wayne. These photographs of uh, the autopsy of Peter Wang assist you in explaining to the court and to the jury, number one, the nature of Peter Wang's wounds. Yes. The path of the bullets. Correct. And the cause of death of Peter Wang. Yes. Your Honor, at this time I would like to offer those exhibits. One to you. One to you. Do you want me to wait to take them? Yeah, it's probably easier for you than reaching over. Okay. 20T, sure. 20S, 20R, 20Q, 20P, 20O, 20N, 20M, 20L, 20K, 20J, 20I, 20H, 20G. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Steve Wall, the clerk is part of the judges looking at this page. I'll wait.
Over the defense objection, states 20G, as in George, will be received as 340. 20H will be received as 341. 20I will be received as 342. 20J will be received as 343. 20K will be received as 344. 20L will be received as 345. 20M as in Mary, 346. 20N as in Nancy, 347. 20O, 348. 20P, 349. 20Q, 350. 20R, 351. 20S, 352. 20T, like Tom, 353. And 20U, 354. Thank you. <coughs> Dr. Sneed, while uh, the clerk is uh, marking those exhibits, uh, what was the age and the measurements of Peter Wayne? Yes. So it was reported that he was 15, 1, 5 years of age. And you asked for the height? Pardon? What, what else you asked? The age and? The measurements. Oh, yes. Height, he height. was 61 inches, so that's 5, 1. Did you say weight? The weight, 128 pounds. <coughs> Dr. Steen, I want to uh, show you six exhibit mark. 340. Tell me about that shows. So if you can want to use the telestrator, you can just pick a color and you can search. It's on the screen. Okay. So I just pointed something. Okay, got it. So what this photograph shows is the right side of um, Mr. Wang's um, face and the right side <coughs> of the head. And um, it shows on the, what we call the temporal region, which is superior and anterior to the ear. This is an entrance uh, gunshot wound. Um, and on the um, right cheek, you can see um, that there's two entry defects, one smaller and one larger, which looks atypical. Okay, and uh, what did those what did that wound do? The wound on the right temporal region um, perforates the cranium and um, it creates a severe damage on the head. He has these burst type injuries, meaning multiple cranial fractures. Um, in I have to say that that wound in association to another wound which is not really shown in this photograph, but it's on the parietal region, a little bit higher. Um, those two wounds, the pathways coalesce, right? And so they spent a lot of energy in the head, creating these fractures, creating the lacerations of the brain, creating transection of parts of the brain. Um, parts of the brain were outside of the cranial vault. And then that led to a very large exit defect that involved the left side of the head, which you can see in there. That's, the, the wound that you said was higher. Could you say show where potentially? I mean, on the it's screen. not really shown here, but it's on there. Right there. Yes. But that's another entrance wound to his head. Correct. And states exhibit did it exit? So this there were multiple fragments, no storming, right in the head. When I looked at the X-ray. But um, these two defects are associated with a, what we call a gaping exit defect. It's a, a very large opening of the head on the left side. So sometimes we can see an actual defined exit wound defect, but in this particular case, due to the severity of the injuries, there was no well-defined exit defects for those two wounds on the right parietal and right temporal scalp. Okay. And the wound to the cheek? So there's two defects, one that's round, right, right here, and then one that's, oh, 
you, you can see that one that's larger. And those two um, projectile fragments or projectile perforated the cheek, it fractured the jaw, it um, perforated the tongue, it fractured the left side of the jaw, and then it ex both of them exited through um, a, another gaping large defect that's on the left uh, side of the face near the cheek that you can't see in this photograph. Okay, so they're pictured here on state's exhibit. Three forty. That, that that's four entrance wounds, four yeah. gunshot entrance wounds. Yes. Two to the head and two to the cheek. Correct. Okay. I'm showing you state's exhibit mark three forty two. How do I how do I erase? I'm sorry. There's marks. She's asking to erase the marks on the oh, okay. there's a, yeah, a bunch of you. arrows. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there you go. So what you're seeing on this photograph is the left side of the head. So the two defects in the parietal and temporal region, um, coalesce and the energy you know, that is spent created this very large um, exit wound. Um, you can see that there are uh, lacerations of the skin, the scalp, and um, you can see um, fragmented bone in some areas, and then fragments of brain tissue um, that came out of the cranial vault. On the um, left cheek anterior to the ear is the exit wound for the two entries that coalesced through the, you know, oral cavity and perforated bone too at the at the cranial base, which is, you know, we have a cranial vault and we still have bones in this area, so it fractured those bones as well. Um, and then they both come out, and again, there's no well-defined exit defect um, with the amount of energy that was you know, spent in these tissues. And now showing you State's Exhibit 341. So that's, um, this wound is showing the previously described uh, entry defects on the cheek, and then it's showing one, two, three, four defects on the, and you're looking at the right side of the chest near the shoulder region, lateral chest, and those are exit wounds from a projectile that fragmented, right? You have multiple tears or exits of those projectiles and fracture bone. Um, the entry for that is lower. So those are exit wounds on the chest. Okay. Showing you State's Exhibit 343. Right. So here, right. So this is the entrance gunshot wound defect that went through the soft tissues and fracture bones and perforated muscles and then fragmented and exited through the right side of the uh, chest. And the state's exhibit 344. That's a close up of that. Why, why, why did the, those exit wounds look that big? Why do they look that big? Why do they look that wide? Is that the question? I'm sorry? I didn't understand the question. Are you asking? No, why do those exit wounds look like that? Why? Yes. So, rifle injuries tend to have um, a lot of. They're high velocity, and the more velocity, the more energy, what they call kinetic energy, is spent in the tissues. And um, it's not like one size fits all. You know, not all entries look the same. Not all exits look the same. Part of the reason why these um, tissues tend to look different is one, because it depends on how many times the projectile fragmented and exited. It also depends if the projectile takes bone with it on the way out. And um, also it depends on the density of the muscle and the elasticity of the skin. So for example, in this area on the chest and near the axilla, the skin is a little bit more lax, right? The muscle, the density of the muscle also comes into play. And when you have all that energy, the projectile creates what's called a temporary cavity 
So it's not only that it perforates, it's not only the pathway through which it goes, I should have explained this with the head, it's also the energy that you, the, the projectile imparts into creates an expansion of sorts of the tissues, right? And that expansion leads to injuries that look like that. I'm now showing you Stacey's exhibit 345. Okay. So what you're looking at in this photograph is, so this is towards the back. This is the, the right hip, and this is the buttock region. And so this is a entrance uh, gunshot wound defect um, below the buttock on the right thigh posteriorly. And uh, where did it go? That particular um, projectile goes through the soft tissues and it fractured, um, let me refer to my notes, I believe the acetabulum. If you give me one second to refer to my notes, please. Yes, the acetabulum and the iliac bone. So um, where your hip bone, we have, you know, the hip bone has an area where the, um, the femur, which is the long bone of the thigh, um, connects with it. That little area that receives the head of the femur is called the acetabulum. And then the bone superior to that is called the iliac bone. So this particular um, pathway um, fragments, uh, fractures those bones as well. And then um, the uh, wound exits through the right side of the abdomen. Okay. Showing you States Exhibit 346. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what we're seeing here, so this is the umbilicus, the belly button. Um, I'm sorry, for some reason. There you go. And this is uh, the right hip area here, and you can see this is the lower abdomen, and you can see this defect. This is the exit defect for that entrance that was posterior below the buttock. And um, there were uh, fragments um, underneath the skin, and that's what's creating, uh, well, this bruise here. States Exhibit 347. So what we're seeing on this um, on this photograph, this is the entry wound that pre I previously described, right below the bottom. Here you see the uh, top of the well. This is the top of the thigh. This is the hip area. This is the knee area, and on the lateral aspect of the right knee, that's the right side. You see the entry wound defect. And this went through the um, soft tissues and muscles and exited through a defect that was um, more follicle proximal or more superior on the um, right thigh. Okay, and States Exhibit 348. Right, so I, I, on the top of the thighs, the previously described wounds, um, what you're seeing here is the um, uh, another defect on the right um, right foot, on the right side of the foot, which I identified as an exit gunshot wound defect. And not really well seen is another defect on the back of the heel. Okay. And States Exhibit 349. So on the top of the uh, photograph, you see his head, and this is his right shoulder region. This defect is an entrance gunshot wound, and it's on the back of the right arm. Okay, and where did it go? So this, um, this particular gunshot wound um, goes through fractures, the humerus, which is the arm bone, and it um, continues through the soft tissues, and so the pathway of this particular gunshot wound coalesces or comes in contact right with the exit wounds that I previously described on the right side of the chest that enter on the right side of the, um, the lateral aspect of the chest. And States Exhibit 350. So there's a lot of glare on the top of the photo, but yes. Thank you. Um, what you're seeing here is, it, so 
When we put the numbers, you, we try to do it so that we can talk about the anatomic position, right, which is standing up, palms forward. But So that's why the number is here. So it may be a little bit confusing, but this, this here is the head. This is the cluster of gunshot wounds that I described on the right um, side of the chest. So what you're seeing here is in this position a um, tangential gunshot wound of the right elbow um, and is showing it's a gaping wound, it's a very large wound, and it's showing the um, fractured bones um, associated to the gunshot wound. And States Exhibit 351. Right. So, can you take off the, Mr. Satz, can you take away the, the markings? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Thank you. Um, so, in this wound, you're seeing the left side of Mr. Wang. Here's his left ear. That's the exit wound that I described on the face. This is the shoulder region. And here you can see there's a, um, I'm going to, like, that's the entry wound, and this is the exit wound. Um, this particular wound is also associated with fractures of the uh, left arm bone. And then you're seeing um, other injuries that include abrasions and contusions, but no, no defects in that area. And uh, were you able to determine the cause of death of Peter Wang? Yes. What was the cause of death? Multiple gunshot wounds. How many gunshot wounds did he get? So in, in total, there were 12. Um, we haven't shown here another uh, two defects that were um, atypical on the back of the left um, forearm, elbow region. Um, that th they were not like a perforating wound, but they had, um, they look like ballistic type of wounds, right? Um, something hits and then the fragments may have hit that area. It wasn't going through and through. In total, it was 12. Okay. And of those 12, uh, how many uh, were lethal in and of themselves? The um, four defects uh, of the head, okay. the four wounds of the head. And uh, I'd like to, uh, with the court's permission, uh, play for you uh, a portion of the video, and you can tell me uh, if you can give me an opinion as to some of the wounds when they uh, were inflicted on the body, okay?
Doctor, were you able to see purposeful movement? In yes, in all the videos. So, in your opinion, what does that indicate to you as to the progression of the wounds into the body of Peter White? That he sustained some of the wounds um, before the lethal wounds on the head. Okay. So he was wounded on the ground before he received the four shots to the head, correct? It looks like he was wounded after he came running towards the end. And he um, was, from the video, it appears that he was also wounded when he was on the ground. Yes. Okay. Because either one of those four shots, he wouldn't have been able to move with. Correct. And you have seen photographs of uh, the area where Mr. Wang was shot, correct? Correct. Showing you States Exhibit 293. What does that indicate to you? Can you? Yes, thank you. So, in this photograph, you can see um, that he has a dense area of um, blood spatter and brain fragmentation. Um, on the wall and around his head and all the brain matter that came through those gaping defects in the area. So that speaks to having his head being shot close to the floor at the floor. And lastly, uh, State's Exhibit uh, 352. So he had you can see on the x-ray the snowstorm, but um, I was able to collect um, two larger fragments of um, projectile from the head. Okay, and State's Exhibit 353. The word, those were the fragments that I recovered from the abdomen, from the entry defect below the buttock that went all the way, fractured the hip, you know, into the abdominal region. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no further questions of Dr. Smith. Do you have any questions? No, ma'am. <clears throat> Thank you. while on recess from today until tomorrow, and like every day, you must not discuss the case with anyone, nor permit anyone to say anything to you or in your presence about the case. If anyone attempts to say anything to you or in your presence about the case, tell the person to stop and report the matter immediately to one of the staff. Other than that, I hope you all uh, have a nice afternoon, and um, please leave your, your notebooks behind. And we will see you tomorrow at the same time. Thank you so much.
excuse, you all may be seated. Uh, we're going to be in recess for the afternoon. We'll start back up tomorrow as close to 9 as possible. Um, we'll follow the same procedure as far as the media goes, as, um, where the media will be able to view the items that are in evidence and that were published to the jury. Um, and unless I'm forgetting something, somebody wants to remind me of, no? Okay, we're in recess, thank you.